With the Apple Vision Pro being out in the world now, I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to explain the differences between virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. It's hard to keep track of all of these different realities, but hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding of them. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Will, and my channel focuses on the experiences technology can enable, both the positive and the negative. Let's start with virtual reality, or VR, which is probably the most popular out of virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Virtual reality completely replaces your environment and immerses you in a new world. To experience VR, you'll need a VR headset, and some popular options include the MetaQuest 2, the PlayStation VR, Valve Index, and there are plenty of other options out there. The first time you try VR, it's a truly magical experience. You place the headset on, suddenly your world is replaced by a new one, and using your controllers, you can interact with virtual objects and the environment around you. Most headsets now use a technology called inside out tracking, which has all the sensors needed to track your head and hand movements built right into the headset. This allows VR headsets to track your position in space, which is one of the primary reasons why it's so immersive. You can see your hands moving around in this virtual world. You're able to look and walk around your virtual environment. The experience of VR, at least well implemented, really does trick your brain to thinking you're in a new world. I remember years ago getting my very first VR headset, at that time was the Oculus Rift, and showing my friend a game, and just watching them lean over a virtual table, and just seeing them completely faceplant. It can really be convincing. Your brain adjusts to this virtual environment really quickly. Right now, in its current state, virtual reality is primarily used for gaming and entertainment purposes, but it also has a purpose in industry. This includes the automotive industry to allow for engineering reviews of new vehicles, or it's used in the healthcare industry to help treat PTSD and anxiety. Moving on to augmented reality, or AR. AR places virtual environments in your existing environment, so you're still completely aware of your surroundings. The first implementation of AR is what I like to call baby VR, and they normally come in the form of AR glasses. Normally this type of AR needs to piggyback off an existing device you own, so a smartphone, a laptop, or a Steam Deck, and then it basically projects a huge screen in your environment. A great example of this are the x row Air Glasses, which basically look like a pair of chunky sunglasses, but have a micro OLED screen for each eye. And when plugged into a smartphone or a laptop, give the impression of having a huge cinema screen in your room. This kind of device mirrors the content on your mobile device. So if I want to watch Netflix on a huge screen, I can plug it directly into my phone, providing it's USB-C. And voila, I have a portable cinema experience. What's missing from this device, and why I classified it as baby AR, is the lack of spatial awareness. Just like I discussed in virtual reality, having the ability to interact with virtual objects and place them in your virtual environment is part of the reason what makes it so immersive, and that's just missing here. As these devices are reliant on your mobile device, and don't have any sensors of their own, it isn't aware of the environment around you. There's just no interaction with any objects in this type of AR. It's just a floating screen. And for entertainment purposes, that's fine. But for immersive experiences, you're not gonna get it from this type of device. The second implementation of AR, I like to call immersive AR, as it adds spatial awareness and interactivity. The two main mediums for this type of AR are smartphones or augmented reality headsets. The simplest form of this is AR on smartphones. I'm sure you've seen this before when shopping for furniture or home products, and sometimes you'll see a button that says, see what this looks like in your room. And when you click it, you're able to visualize that piece of furniture in your environment. And you can even move it around your environment and place it on or against surfaces. These mobile AR experiences are normally quite limited. These experiences can be quite clunky too, as not every smartphone has depth sensors, so proportions of furniture end up being off, or it's not able to place it directly on or against a surface. For the peak AR experience, for the most immersive AR experience, this is where AR headsets come in. Now, these are very niche products and aren't very commonplace, and they're very expensive. 
But two examples include the Microsoft HoloLens and the Magic Leap 2. These devices, like the Xro glasses, have screens for each eye. But the main difference is they have sensors for spatial awareness, so you're able to interact with virtual objects in your environment. This spatial awareness gives your headset context of the environment around you, which enables you to do the following. You can place a virtual object on a physical one in your environment, like a table or the floor. It allows your virtual object to remain in the same position in space. So if you walk away or turn around and come back, the object remains exactly where you placed it. And depending on the headset, these sensors also allow for the tracking of your hands or controllers. Some headsets even have eye tracking, so it knows exactly what you're looking at. I'm looking at you. Right now, these types of headsets are primarily for enterprise use. So for engineering uses to see how components interact with each other, or for training surgeons for various types of surgery. Overall, augmented reality is still very much in its infancy, but it has so many cool applications. And when the more immersive, spatially aware AI glasses shrink to the size of glasses, or even contact lenses, I think it's going to be huge. Think about walking through a city and having huge holographic sculptures towering through the skies, or walking past a restaurant and a floating menu appearing. The possibilities are endless. And finally, mixed reality, which brings both VR and AR together. In fact, most standalone headsets being sold today are actually mixed reality headsets. What sets mixed reality headsets apart from its AR, VR counterparts is its ability to seamlessly blend your real environment with virtual ones. Some examples of mixed reality headsets include the Apple Vision Pro and the MetaQuest 3. Although they both lean more towards one side of the AR VR spectrum, it's worth noting for all intents and purposes, mixed reality headsets are actually virtual reality headsets. As when you put the headset on your head, it's actually obstructing your view there's a screen in front of you. They get their augmented reality powers through an array of cameras that feed in footage from the outside world, making it appear that you're in your own environment. Different headsets do this to varying levels of success. And I think right now, the Apple Vision Pro is the leader in this respect. The MetaQuest 3 leans more towards the VR side of things. And in my eyes, it's a VR headset first, capable of playing traditional VR games, that completely immerse you in a virtual world. But the headset is also capable of feeding in your real world environment for certain applications. An example of this is the introductory game, First Encounters. Initially, you begin in your real world environment, and then your room starts to fall to pieces, introducing elements of VR where virtual creatures start to enter your room. However, most of the experiences on the Quest 3 are still virtual reality ones. The Apple Vision Pro, on the other hand, behaves more like an augmented reality headset. So most of the time, you're in your own environment and interacting with floating interactive elements. This includes browsing the web, watching films, or having a meeting. Despite the emphasis on AR, the Vision Pro is fully capable of virtual reality experiences too. In fact, at the turn of a dial, you can make your environment completely disappear. Say you're watching a movie and don't want to be distracted. You can switch to VR and be surrounded by a virtual environment. Imagine watching Star Wars and your virtual environment is Tatooine. All that being said, Apple is clearly pitching the Vision Pro as an augmented reality headset first, virtual reality second. So that's virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality explained. Which of these realities do you think is the future? Or do you think they're all going to converge into one? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more videos like this, then a like and subscribe would really show your support. And until then, I'll see you in the metaverse.